a situation that I was walking through with my husband, Art. Mm. And um, in February of 2016, I found out that um, he was having an affair and it rocked me to my core. I, I, I really, I honestly can't even still now to this day, I can't even put into words what, um, what level of shock I was walking through. So um, I remember part of the journey that I had to go through uh, without knowing whether we were going to reconcile or not. I, I needed to pursue redemption. And I think that's an important point for people to understand is that redemption and reconciliation don't have to hold hands. Mm. So reconciliation depends on another person being repentant and making choices that lead to a reconciliation. And that's what can be so frustrating when you're in the messy middle place of saying it's not supposed to be this way, but how do I get out of it? You know, it can feel like the only way to recon the only way to redemption with God is reconciliation. That's not true. You can have absolute redemption with God. You can pursue redemption with God even if the reconciliation never happens. That's one choice away. That's just saying, God, you are a redeemer, and I need right. you to, to redeem me in the middle of this. And so um, I remember I was pursuing that redemption with God, and part of that was to write an impact letter to forgive my husband for what had happened. And um, with forgiveness, it's hard because there's layers to forgiveness. As Christians, we know we're supposed to forgive. Yep. But uh, for me, I could forgive the facts of what happened. That was the easier part of forgiveness. Mm. What was harder is forgiving the impact that all of that had on me. Sure. I never struggled with anxiety. And now, all of a sudden, I'm in a situation that I am more anxious than ever before. So I was writing this impact letter, and I remember I wrote down... Um, I haven't just been broken into pieces. I have been shattered. And you know, when, when brokenness happens, there's a wonderful Christian picture that we have in our brain of like picking up the broken pieces, gluing them back together, and God's light can shine through that brokenness and yay, you know, sing a praise song and right, cue, right, right. cue the, the like ticker tape parade, sure, right? Sure, sure, sure. But that wasn't my story. Mm. I looked around and I didn't see broken pieces to glue back together. I saw nothing but dust. I was that shattered. Jeez. So I'm writing this letter and all of a sudden I remember Genesis in Genesis 2 that God, of all the ingredients in the world, he had access to everything. He chose dust to use to make his favorite creation, mankind. And so he picks up the dust and he breathes into it. And so the letter, the impact letter took a dramatic turn. And instead of me ending with how shattered I was, I ended with saying, dust doesn't signify an end. With God, wow. dust is often what must be present for a brand new to begin. Wow. And I remember those are the kind of moments that I had. And that's what's recorded in this book. It's, it's, Beautiful. it's the depth of pain, but sure. also the magnitude of the presence of God to literally take my pen and write a redemptive message and to show me how to pursue redemption and, and a redeeming quality in the midst of a story that was so brutally difficult. Wow. So talk to me, you, you know, you, you find out, you discover, and you've been with your husband for how long? A long time. I mean, I've been with him longer than I was without him. So, like, my whole adult life. Right. And so this, this is revealed, and, and you're feeling things you've never felt before. Yeah. Even though you're prepared, it doesn't take away the emotion. That's right. And the preparation helped me have that initial response of, this isn't who you are. Um, but then uh, I... I, I crawled in my bed and, and wept like I've never wept before. Wow. And I, I felt as if the world was caving in on me. I mean, not just, mm. not just my circumstances, but I really felt like my future. It, you know, sometimes we feel like the world is caving in on us because the present circumstance is pressing really hard. But we know in a week, a month, a year, it's going to be better, right? Yep. This, this was not that. This was my entire future. I, I felt like in that moment, I was going to lose my, my marriage. I was going to 
lose the legacy that mm. Art and I had built with my kids. Mm. Um, I, I had so much emotional turmoil that I remember I went to my counselor and my counselor had just read this book and um, he said to me, Lisa, your body is going to keep the score. You've got to learn how to process this emotion. Wow. Um, and if you don't, it, it's going to harm you physically as well as emotionally. Um, and I wanted to. I just didn't know how. I was hurting so deeply. And I kept telling my friends, I feel like my body inside, my insides are just twisted up in a knot. And, um, and little did I know that that's exactly what was physically happening on an emotional sense, but also on a physical sense, Jeez. too. Because a couple of months into this journey, um, I woke up one morning. I stepped out of bed. I was in so much physical pain. I couldn't process what was happening to me. I collapsed beside my bed. My family rushed me to the hospital, and I was in excruciating pain. So they admitted me to the hospital because of the pain, and they started running tests, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And I laid in that hospital bed, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning, in more pain than, than what I could even express. And I remember the doctors kept saying, we can't figure it out. And I kept saying, I know something's terribly wrong with me. Mm. And then Friday morning, a surgeon came in to the room and he said, Lisa, I ran one last test and we finally figured out what's happened. The right side of your colon has ripped away from the abdominal wall it is wrapped around the left side and it's cut the blood flow off inside of you and we've got to rush you into emergency surgery. Jeez. And he said, and by the way, I know you've been praying for God to take away that pain, but I thank God that he didn't answer that prayer because had he taken away the pain, we would have sent you home and your colon would have ruptured and you would, you would have died. And I remember as they were wheeling me back into surgery I was having all kinds of chaotic thoughts about my situation, but the one thing that brought me so much peace is God was not a far removed God in my physical pain. Mm. I believe it probably took every bit of holy restraint for God not to answer my prayer Wow! because he loved me that much because God loves us too much to answer our prayers at any other time wow. than the right time and in any other way than the right way. And that's true in a physical sense, but it's also true in an emotional sense too. Yeah. So God taught me a lot about pain in this season. So, so here, here you go, you face this emotional pain and this physical pain. Do, do you ever go to a dark place mentally? All the, all the scriptures, you know, I, I ask you that with a lot of respect. You've written how many books? You're a New York Times bestseller. Uh, millions of people being ministered to through Proverbs 31. I mean, from a distance from the outside, you are, you've got it all together. I've been to your home. Your home is immaculate. It, 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 you know, it's, Not today. But, yeah, but, <laughs> but there's no food there because of the whole fasting thing, but, but, I, but I enjoy going there. But, um, but, but did, did you ever go to a dark place? Of course I did. Of course Talk I to did. me about that, because I, I need to know. It will, it will help me personally, just knowing that you also, because I think some people look at someone like you with so much success, so much going for you, and talk to me. What does that look like for you? Um, to me, it was God's promises seemed doubtful, mm. his lack of intervention hurtful, mm. and his timing questionable. Wow. And... The, those were the moments where I was like, you know, God, I feel like somehow I have fallen through the cracks of your good plan. Mm. And I think a lot of people feel that way. Absolutely. I, I, think, I think it's hard. I think those three things, you know, when his promises seem to apply to everyone else around you, you know, when they're walking in the blessing of a promise, mm. And you're just in the process of a promise. Right. It feels unfair. Right. And when his timing is so difficult, you know, 2016 was a year of extreme highs and extreme lows. I mean, here I was walking through the most devastating situation with my husband and three of my five kids got married in 2016. Jeez. You know, so that when God said, you need to trust my timing, 
Like that was a really hard, wow. it was easy in the moment, praying and fasting, like, you sure. know, I gotta trust your timing until I knew what that really meant, right? right? And sitting in all those wedding ceremonies and not telling my kids what we were going through because I didn't want to ruin their special day. So carrying it inside, Jeez. you know, it was, yeah, of course I had the darkest moments of my life. Wow. And, and when I felt like God could fix this and yet he was choosing not to, that's hard. You see, we serve a really good God. Yeah. But we also serve a really good God who does allow hurt. And that's at that point where our feelings and our faith come in conflict sometimes. Right. And that's those dark moments of the soul where I don't, I don't have a quick, easy answer for you, Chad. Sure. What, what I can say, it's in those moments where I felt my faith slipping mm. that I had to call my friends and say, help me stand on your faith yes. today. And you, you were one of those friends. We had, we had a conversation yeah. in the midst of some of my darkest times. And, right. you know, I am thankful. I'm thankful that, um, that I picked up the phone. Yeah. And I'm thankful that I had other people who could speak life back into me in those moments. But, you know, some, some moments you're going to feel like the victory is possible. And some moments... Yeah you're gonna feel like a victim of your circumstances and you're not sure which way this whole thing's gonna turn out. I, I, I love what you're saying because I always feel like that proverb is so true. A man that isolates himself, seeks his own desire, and rages against all wisdom. So, m but most of us, when we get into a dark place, we wanna hide, we wanna stay in bed, we don't wanna to talk to anybody. But I love that you were smart enough to go, I'm, I'm gonna get around people. I'm going to pick up the phone. But let me say, I did not want to do this. Sure. Let me tell you. Like, I can isolate with the best of them. You know? <laughs> let me tell you, my moments of isolation, I am not fasting. I'm eating whatever I want to eat in those moments, okay? Right. So, but I did, I did this thing, and it was so outside of my comfort zone and so not what I wanted to do but I made myself go on a pilgrimage of visiting people who I knew I could, I could stand on their faith, mm. even if it was just for a couple of days. I remember I called my friend Shelly Giglio. I went and stayed at her house for a couple of days. Wow. I called my friend Colette, went and stayed at her house wow. for a week and then another week, and then it may have been a third week. <laughs> I, I went and visited friends in Nashville, and yeah. when I couldn't go visit people, I picked up the phone and I called them. None of those things felt comfortable, but I was blessed every single time. Wow. It was like the Lord had little gifts for me tucked inside those people wow. waiting. I just had to take that step and make the connection. I love that. Talk to me about uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about, you know, Maybe some people are watching and going, okay, maybe those two, you know, she's sort of that. But it just kind of kept going for a while. Yeah. Talk to me about that. So in June of 2017, um, I thought Art and I were about to reconcile and that things were really turning around. And then the bottom fell out of our world again. Um, and some things cycled back into his life that... Um, I remember I wrote a blog finally telling the world what we were walking through because at that point it was either going to be shared with the rumor mill or I was going to get in front of it and right. share it with truth. And so um, I was devastated to write that I had said to my husband, I can love you and I can forgive you, but I will not share you. Mm. And um, so that was in June. And um, at that point I decided to take a sabbatical. So... Um, I spent a good long season of quiet and, um, and trying to get my bearings once again from just my world being turned upside down sure. again. And so I made a bunch of appointments. 
um, because I don't sit still really well. Right. And so um, I just wanted to go through all the appointments you're supposed to do that I never have time to do when I'm in busy right. ministry life and everything. So one of those was to go get a mammogram. And it wasn't time for me to get a mammogram, but, um, and I'd had so many clear tests that I didn't really feel like it was necessary, but I thought it's on the list. I should just check it off and that way I won't have to go next year. Right. And um, little did I know that I would get a call back and um, for another appointment and then I would get another call back and then they um, requested a biopsy. And then there was a day that I sat in a very pink office in a pink chair and watch the doctors attach the word cancer to my life. And di I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And um, in kind of a crazy way, um, Art was determined he was gonna walk through this with me. And um, so he was sitting right there. And I remember I pulled up a, a chair that was empty. So it was Art, myself, and the doctor, and I pulled up one more chair um, because I thought, I'm not doing this without you, Jesus. Mm. And so I just had to see that he was there too. Wow. And then we got in the car and I thought, well, what do you do after you get the news you have breast cancer? Like, how do, you, how do you do this? And I remember telling the Lord, like, this is too much. There's a lot of people praying for me and they're gonna be really mad. <laughs> that this is part of this story now too. Like, I'm gonna go home and write in my book yeah. about me now having breast cancer, you know? And God, they're gonna be mad at you. They're gonna be so <laughs> mad at you. Um, but, you know, again, I mean, wow. it's, God didn't do this to me. He didn't. This isn't the way that he designed the world to wow. be. People are not supposed to get cancer or their husband have an affair. I mean, this isn't what he designed this world to be. Sin did that to this world. Mm. Sin broke God's original design. Wow. And so in between the first two chapters of Genesis and the last two chapters of Revelation, that's God's love letter to us to say, I understand. Mm. God sees you, my friend. Mm. He sees you. He knows exactly what you're facing. That's right. He knows the depth of hurt and pain that you're walking through. As a matter of fact, some of my favorite verses are in Mark chapter 14. There are no words of Jesus I relate to more than when he's in the garden of Gethsemane and he cries out to his father. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. God, everything is possible for you. Take this from me. That's what Jesus says to his father. And so he knows, he knows what it feels like to be walking through something that that you feel like this is gonna kill me. Mm. God changed the plan. I don't want this to be my story. And maybe you're there right now, my friend. I understand, but even more importantly, Jesus understands. And then Jesus turns it around by uttering these nine earth shaking, hell shattering, demon quaking words of trusting God. And he says, yet not what I will, but what you will. Mm. And that's the place I had to get to in this whole journey. I had to say, God, I guess if I knew what you know, maybe I could be brave enough to choose what you've chosen. Wow. But since I don't know what you know, mm. I better stay real close to you. Yes. So that you can reveal good to me that you've promised. You've promised good will come. Beautiful. And I don't see it. And I don't like the way it looks right now. Right. But somehow in the heavenly realms, mm. you are shifting and arranging a good that I would choose if only I could have been brave enough to do it. Wow, beautiful.